Welcome back to another video on Gearsaw Studios, and today I'm going to be showing you how to build yourself a lush cave space, in case you ever wanted to live down here. Without further ado, let's investigate how we'd go about this. And you may notice part of the build is already done. I had to delete some clips due to a lack of audio. From here, you can see a pretty basic palette. The only things of note are one, you're going to have to go to warm biomes. I mean, bamboo, I'm going to be using mangrove later on, and some calcite too here and there depending on how formal you want to make some rooms. Along with that, you have to go to the nether. Otherwise, should not be too hard. Just make sure to set up some bamboo somewhere. Then, find yourself a lush cave. This is an exemplary example. You do not need a lush cave with three geodes all right next to each other. That, that's really unnecessary. I chose this because it looks pretty for a video, but in reality, it would be much more practical to do it somewhere shorter like this. Sure, the vines might be in the way, but you can always use shears to reduce their height. You can see somewhere flat like here, remove the lava, dig into the wall, and you'd have a much easier time building this. But of course, I have to do the most grandiose version. Starting off, you can see it's quite complex, but there are a couple of things you should know in order to make this part easier, because sure, it might be a little bit extreme of an entrance, but it's not as hard as you think. First off, we have a path going down the middle. It's made completely of stairs, and something you need to check before you are done with this, can you fall into a hole? If yes, change your stair placement, because otherwise, you're going to have a little bit of annoyance falling into various pits on this bridge. Then, you have that done, it's walkable, mix in some polished diorite or whatever block you want. Then, on either side, water pools like this, filled up with drip leaves, and then some sea grass, clay on the ground, maybe even some axolotls and waterfalls. And if you're feeling especially fantastic, maybe even cram some coral in there if you can. Then, with all this in mind, these little waterfalls here, texture to the behind with some stairs. Make sure to waterlog them or else you're going to get some funny rendering errors. And then do support beams across the ceiling. This part is the hardest part of this, but what you need to do is round out the ceiling, add small imperfections. You can see here, this might as well be the original cave if I replace these blocks back to their original position. Make sure to not do that. It should look a little bit more messy like this. That way, it looks a bit more like it was carved into the cave itself. Now, with this in mind, place some moss here, and then you can build the entrance to your thing. I recommend deep site tiles, and maybe make this place a little bit more vanity. With our entrance out of the way, we can move on to the beginning section of this build. Notice how I try keeping the walls filled. And this area here is not. Notice how it's a bit more bland. Then we have this room, it has a bit more going on. And you can see why this room works better. You want to incorporate more things, even if they might get in the way a little. And then you'll need a way in and out of the base. I do not recommend texturing this part, it would be a waste of your time for the most part. Here we have moss carpets, and below, powder snow which means this is completely survival friendly. So, for a demonstration, I go up. Notice how there's a little bit of waterlogging stuff, but not very important. And then, if I want to go back down, then I fall down. Notice how these walls are alternating stairs, with lava flowing down them. Although this might look expensive, these are actually only four lava buckets. They're simply flowing down, and there is no different. From here, might want to incorporate some small crop farms here and there. Then you have a little bit of a roadblock in the build. If you are so early game or not particularly confident in your skills, maybe you'd want to downscale this. But this part of the tutorial is going to be a hard part. We need a main room. And this room can be as big or small as you want. I want to go big, which means you might have to pay close attention. What you want in here is a storage room and a way to get to other rooms. 
preferably two stories. So in this case, I recommend bringing a fully powered beacon if you are planning to do the same size. Otherwise, you can do something smaller in order to save on space and time. With all the details here, with our cracked stone and our stairs, well, this room is here. And you can see why I recommended a beacon for this. It's giant. And this isn't necessary if you don't have the means. Because, well, look, you don't need this big of a room. And even though I'm a maniac who needs all this storage, and also building errors, so it's interesting to see what you can do with the build if you're to go larger. But one thing of note, scan the area one more time before building that big room. Because if I were to keep building it and angle it this way and keep going, I would have ran into this cave here. And this is not as interesting as something like this. Hence why I rotated it. Do a simple dig around in all the different directions. And eventually you might even find a cute little place like this. Even if it's not quite in the lush caves anymore and even has flood and carpet. So it's a geode and that can be really useful. So make sure to always make sure that your area is exactly what you want to be looking for. And if there's nothing, it's okay. You can always try building your own or even try incorporating a bit of your own build style into it. Say a bot of supports in a dugout area to make it look kind of natural. But all that yapping done, what I really recommend here is do the same thing you had with the entrance right here. It's pretty much the same thing, but upscaled and slightly less detailed. And then once you do that, more hanging lights, make sure to have a lot of them. This is a giant room. And then we can start placing down more infrastructure. I recommend placing another portal in its own room, somewhere maybe across the hall like this. With a few more details in this room, well, we can see hanging lanterns, reused from the beginning portion. And then, of course, the chest, walkways up here, and a lot of excavation, hence why this part might not be for everyone. That's completely okay, I mean, we have our little rooms that we're going to add in for brewing and smithing. Anyways, what we want to do here is incorporate any nearby caves if we can, then maybe make the floor sandstone, pretty you know, unique. Texture everything nearby, you can see this hallway uses a bit of texturing. And then, finally, what we want to do is we want to go to the second floor, go to the ceiling, and then replace a lot of it with moss. Get your moss. I mean, it's pretty easy. Bone meal with the ground or even destroy the ground. And then lather it on. Don't make it perfect, though. If it's too perfect, then it looks like it was placed there. If you do something a bit more organic, I mean, this is on the fly. It's not going to be perfect. It will look a lot better. Something like this, and then replicate it all across the ceiling. Maybe even include some clay gaps. And then from here, place glow berries on it. And these will grow down. Make sure to cut them with shears after a while in order to make sure they don't keep growing and obscuring everything. Maybe about five or six blocks at most. Then, cap off the room, add spiral staircases when possible. You can take a look at this design here, and then use the interior design here, where we want to make sure we don't have large areas unoccupied. From here, it will be pretty easy to do the rest of the build. Make sure you don't have any glaring obvious errors like this, I mean you can see where I went wrong, copying error, and then you'll be able to start doing your rooms. Once you have the ceiling all nice and mossy, decided to not do any clay, of course, glow berries, and you're probably wondering how I made it actually look good. Well, of course, I waited a while, but you might notice, oh, that's a lot of berries. Then some vines don't. Cool feature. Just bone meal them. That's all you have to do. More berries. Now you can have a much prettier area without having to worry what vines even have berries. Well, with all this, I'm a big fan. No, not that kind of fan. Seriously, why does this keep happening? But anyways, with all this in mind, more texturing, and then lay the groundwork for your rooms. For here, I'm going to place a large cyan terracotta statue, and then I'm going to have another gateway to another room. Think like this, or better yet, like these. 
These little doors here are really nice. And in this case, what you want to do is make those and connect them to little rooms. I'm going to do a couple of them, and with that, the difficulty returns back to the advertised yellow. And we can finally use some calcite and normal terracotta. Alright, we have this area here, a trophy station. I knew because I discovered this isn't tall enough for a statue, and what do you know, it's an odd number of blocks. Which meant it wasn't feasible to fit a statue into here. Anyways, spiral staircases on both sides, chains to act as little tight ropes to get across in order to save you some time, and then some extra details later on. But most importantly, right here is an example of what a room could look like. This would be a much more casual room, and even if it might clash a little with the rest of the build, so keeping it a bit more unique is always appreciated. Anyways, go into your beginning area, see these doors here, yeah, build more of those, and space them around, roughly randomly in fact, something like this, and what do you know, new room entrance. Yep, new room, and then copy that several times over, and once you have all that done, then we can start building each of the rooms. Here's a little checklist of what you might want to do. First, go into your inventory if you need help. Well, oh, got mossified. Spent too long in here. But anyways, go into your functional blocks and think about all these different blocks. Well, considering smithing tables and anvils exist, why not make a smeltery? Same thing with these furnaces here. Want somewhere for banner making? Well, that can be its own room. Fletching table still doesn't have a usage. Yeah, I'm not even going to get into that. Then... Alchemy, a bedroom, enchanting, perhaps even a casual room with a jukebox. All these things could have their own rooms. Think about it like that, and then you'll likely be able to make a couple of interesting room concepts to flesh them out with the various blocks in the palette, whether it be bamboo, calcite, terracotta, etc. And one minor thing, in here you can see the little door goes down, some uh, very basic terraforming, I'm not worrying about that part right there. But here's the thing, even if there is a load of monsters here, the only thing that can break in is a spider. And considering it's pretty well lit in here, I don't consider that a major concern. If you do, then you can put a bunch of glass here in order to seal it off, so that way you still have a nice view, even if without connected glass mods. Either way, get ready for your new rooms. As you're making your final rooms for this build, one thing of note is including spore blossoms in here. Considering spore blossoms are, well, particle producers, but it makes us feel more like a lush cave. In this case, scatter them around, maybe more texturing on the sandstone floor, etc. But one thing of note is once you go into your rooms, of course excavate them, take whatever ores you can, of course. I saw a massive copper vein, which even generated some raw copper in it. And what you want to do is separate the interior from the exterior. What do I mean by this? Don't use the same blocks. Of course, I was just talking about how we were using terracotta. Well, like this. Maybe divide the room. You know, not the best transition yet, but you get the idea. And then we get our terracottas, and then we alternate, and now we can start building a proper room out of this. Doesn't exactly fit the vibe, but if the whole base looks the same, then it's less unique. Which means this is for the better. Going into our main area again, you can see that I have four rooms, and a fifth one hidden back here. And each one of these corresponds to a different level of difficulty. Because of course, this is a very tough room right here. Might even go into a red tier because of that ceiling. But the rest of the build is still pretty tame. This is a little bit of excavation, but nothing terribly hard. This could be potentially difficult, but it's only a small portion of the build. But of course, we have this tough area here. So you might want to downscale it a little. Maybe you want to make the rooms really good in this one a little bit more basic. Well, I have five different rooms. This one is the easiest. This would be a mine room, and you can see up, down. Very simple. The only things are texturing, some stairs, lighting done by redstone, and a barrel. Then we have our easy plus room, the bedroom. 
This one has a bit more detail, and also has a lodestone because I didn't know what else to put here, but you might want that anyways. You can see, I included a bit more complex stuff in terms of what's in this room. Along with that, if you are not accidentally looping in to your own build, hence why this room is so small along with the mine, then you might want to go down. Something like this. You can see the reminiscence with this whole build to trial chambers with this main area here. Then, you might want to go for something a little bit more difficult. This would be a medium tier. Although trimmed armor is not necessary, I particularly like it. Nothing terribly complex with this, slightly off center, but honestly I think it adds a little to the charm. Not very difficult here, besides the potential coal investment. Then we have our advanced to normal. This one's the library, and you can see how I added a bunch of details, while still keeping it functional. Up here, our lapis barrel in order to cut down on travel times, no grindstone, have it in the other room and also it would look ugly. And then we have this cute little room right here. And you can see, I really like this room. All the small details add up. Make sure that your walls and such have things on them. But, of course, if you add too much, it might become over cluttered. So be careful. If you're watching this in 121, don't forget about the new painting. And then, finally, we have a hard room. I don't recommend making all of your rooms like this. But this is an exceptionally complex one, our brewing room. Hanging pots using pottery shards, then some trap doors, a gradiented area here with end rods, along with some basic texturing, and a small room here with barrels for flooring to put your brewing ingredients, along with a small empty table up here. I'd recommend adding a few extra details, that's actually a mistake. Either way, you pretty much have this build done. What you want to do with all this is to texture it, and that's pretty simple. Remember how you did this? Well, do this for the rest of the build. Leave no wall untouched. Might even want to add small little shelves around, kind of like how I have here. Since if you leave large areas untouched, it comes off as a little amateurish, even if they're textured. Once you have your final details in the back, go to the front, make sure the entrance is viable. I didn't put too much effort into this part particularly since, of course, it really depends on your build location. Either way, we have the powder snow, and then we have the bubble elevator, which means this build is complete. Starting off with a fancy entrance like this, and then we have some of our basic utilities here. You know, going right into the base, get all of your simple stuff sorted, along with transport to and from the surface. Some basic food. And then we have this big area here. We have a couple of shelves with miscellaneous items and things you might need while down here in your large storage system. A little bit of a treasure hall. And then we have rooms lining this whole place. You can see how this can be quite useful since you can change palettes and styles. Also, this brewing room has waterlogged stairs for easy water bottle access. Trust me, works, or at least in Java edition. And then up here, we have simple desk, fence gates, between fences, parkour to get to the other side, and then some secret storage because the floor is upside down barrels. From here, we go back up, we have a spiral staircase, of course, fence gates with our fences in order to add a little variety, and chains to get across here. And here, we have varying levels of difficulty between our different structures. We have our bedroom, which is a little tougher than the easiest room, the mine. And then we have the quite detailed library, which really comes down to how many miscellaneous items you can grab and can you shove a parrot into here. And then we have the blacksmith, which is a little less detailed but serves the same purpose. With this, you have a very comprehensive base that you can adjust to your skill level, and even though it might be a medium base, well, you can either go extreme with this part, or go a little simpler with these parts here. Either way, very customizable and highly recommend if you have a good cave nearby, or particularly like axolotls. And with that, it's the end of today's video. If you enjoyed this video, remember, please like and subscribe, it really helps me out. Either way, enjoy the rest of your day, Gearsaw out.